Good morning Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Wednesday, July 15th, 2015, around 5.54 in the morning, Berwick in Massachusetts. It's going to be mixing sun and clouds today, very humid, highs about 80 or so, chance of severe thunder showers later on today. Some news to report. The American League beat the National League in the uh, All-Star game by a score of 6-3, to three, meaning the American League gets home field advantage at the World Series. Angels outfielder Mike Trout won All-Star game MVP. And also the SB Awards are tonight on 8 p.m. on ABC. And the NBA is going to tweak, tweak the playoff um, seeding this year to top eight teams will still qualify for the playoffs, but they're going to be listed one through eight for their best record, regardless of what a division winner is. Some Every time in previous formats, the, each of the division winners will get an automatic, like one of the top four seeds, but that's no guarantee now. It's, it's going to be based on record and stuff. And that's about it on the news. And my first video subject of the day is my review of the 1991 WCW Great American Bash paid preview which took place in Baltimore, Maryland on June 13th, 1999. The main event was Big Sexy Kevin Nash defending the WCW World Championship against Macho Man Randy Savage plus they had other matches on this card. Colony action for this for the pay per view with Tony Schiavone, Mike Tenay, and Bobby the Brain Heen. They were the voices of WCW during this time period. And in April of 1999, WCW changed their logo and stuff, changed the ring, so they got an a, a upgrade on the set and stuff like that. And this is what happened on the pay per view. There were no dark matches for the crowd of Baltimore to see. The first match was. A hardcore match. It was Hack with Chastity. Hack was the Sandman in ECW facing off against Nasty Boy Brian Knobs with the mouth of itself, Jimmy Hart in this match. Both wrestlers were heels, but Hack played the de, de facto face, and this was a go oh no, quite okay hardcore match. The ending had like Jimmy Hart accidentally hit Brian Knobs with a chair, and Hack uses the Cena Port Kane on. Brian Knobs for the one, two, three, but afterwards, you Morris attacks Hack and him and Brian Knobs do the double team on Hack and lay him out. The next match was Van Hammer facing off against Mikey Ripwreck. This was about an eight minute match. Van Hammer wins with the Cobra Crush Slam and stuff. This was just a squashed match in my opinion. Both wrestlers weren't doing anything of significance in WCW. The next match was Buff Bagwell facing off against the Disco Inferno. Buff turned face early in the year. He was the buff and he was the stuff. He was real over with the crowd. And Buff wins with the Buff Blockbuster, which was kind of a top rope like stunner move, which was pretty good. This match was okay. The next match were the No Limit Soldiers, who were Conan and Ray Mysterio Jr. They had Master P in their corner, who was a rapper and an agent and stuff. And they also had Sol or Sola facing off against the West Red Texas Rednecks. It was Bobby Duncan Jr. and Kurt Henning with Barry Windham. This was the debut of the West Texas who had nits on rap is crap and <laughs> it was real real funny and stuff. And Mr and Kurt Henning and Bobby Duncan Jr. and Barry Wyndham Lex Tech was this way. This was a decent gimmick and stuff. And this was a back and forth match and stuff. Referees ejected Master P from the ringside area and stuff. And it was a back and forth. The ending had swallow and saw so, so interfere. And Conan pins Bobby Duncan Jr. for one, two, three. It was a like, okay tag team match, but afterwards Barry Wyndham comes in and the three heels, Penny, Duncan, and Wyndham lay out the No Limits Soldiers. The next match was Ernest Miller, the cat, with Sonny Ono 
facing off against Hollis Hogan. This was just was a total squash match, about five minutes. And a smell of wins by hitting Hollis Hogan with, with a shoe and stuff. And a smell and heel character in WCW at the time was a great mid card heel comedy gimmick. He says he was real kind of way over, a little bit over the top. He says, somebody call my mother. Somebody call my mother and stuff like that. Pretty, pretty funny. And that was it on that match. The next match was for the WCW Predators and see it was Nature Boy Rip Flair with Arn Anderson and the head nurse who became Asia facing off against Rowdy Rowdy Piper who was the WCW president at the time and this was for the presidency of WCW. This feud was started off a lot because you know Rowdy Rowdy Piper put Ric Flair in a, like an, a, a mental institution, an insane asylum and stuff, and some of the skits for this insane asylum were like fun, very, very funny and stuff, comedy and stuff, it was very, very funny, and this was an, oh, a decent match, Flair and Piper had, had at it and stuff, fought back and forth, fought back and forth, back and forth. Flair was cheating to win. Arn Anderson was holding Flair when he was putting a figure for a leg lock on Rowdy Rowdy Piper, but Buff Bagwell comes down and attacks Arn Anderson. The referee sees it, calls, calls for disqualification, and with Flair's a new WCW president, and Bagwell was attacking Flair and Anderson, but Piper comes up and attacks um, with um, Buff Bagwell, P Piper turned heel, and all three of them were beating Buff Bagwell up into the referees, and the suits come down and stuff. This was a decent match, but made no sense for Piper to turn heel and stuff. It was, you know, awful, this bad booking by WCW. The next match was a Fox Count Anywhere match. It was WCW um, TV champion, the dog face with Glenn Rick Steiner facing off against Sting in a non title WCW TV match. Chris Jericho was doing commentary and stuff. This was a good crazy match and stuff. Interference by um, Scott Steiner, Big Papa Palm, the US champion at the time, and Tank a Abbott, who had dogs and stuff. Ending of the match, Sting gets attacked by dogs and stuff. and. And it could not continue, so Rick Steiner wins the match. It was a kind of a poorly planned match, very, very awful. The next match was for the WCW World Tag Team Championships. It was a Jer the Jersey Triad, which was DDTP, Diamond Pit, Dallas Page, Field of Pain, Canyon. Who's better than Canyon? Nobody. And bam, bam, Bigelow, the challengers facing off against the WCW World Tag Team Champions at the time, Chris Benoit and Perry Saturn. This was a classic, great tag team match back and forth. About 20 minutes was an awesome tag team match. Ending had um, Canyon interfere when the referee was trying to push um, the ref, um, at, um Push Benoit back, Canyon attacks Saturn, and DDP lays Saturn out with the Diamond Cutter and the Jersey Triads, the new WCW Tag Team Champions. And Dean Malenko comes down and tries to attack DDP and Bam Bam and Canyon, but he's laid out and stuff. And that's a great t tag team match. Jersey Triad was a great, you know, great tag team in 1999 for WCW. They used that the Freebird rule. That means any of the three of them could defend the tag team titles at any time. That was a great, great rule and stuff, you know. And the main event was for the WCW World Championship. It was Macho Man Randy Savage with um, Gorgeous George, Miss Madness, who was Mona, Molly Holly. And WWE and Medusa facing off against Big Sexy Kevin Nash, and this was you know a you know a decent uh, main event and stuff. Um, and um, the ending had Kevin Nash lay what's um, Macho Man with a power bomb, and then the ladies interfered. K Kevin Nash was you know fighting them off, but then a big surprise comes. A big surprise comes. This surprise is. The, the 
a psycho man himself, said Vicious, who returns to WCW for the first time in six years, and he attacks. Kevin Nash, referee, calls for the bell, automatically disqualification for Macho Man. Um, Kevin Nash retains the WCW World Championship, but um, Sid Vicious knocks him out and stuff, and lays him out with a power bomb and stuff. You know, and then ending the play per view was all okay. This WCW um, Great American Bash was, you know, a decent card and stuff. It's I give it give it a C plus. There were some good matches, but other other matches didn't belong on the card, and some of the storylines was pretty awful. And this this was the continuing decline of WCW, and. This was the next to last um, Great American Bash pay-per-view card for WCW. Tomorrow I'm going to reveal Great American Bash 2000 from Baltimore, Maryland, which it was the last one and was very, very awful. Be back later, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter to more video blogs for this video blog. Later on in the day will be about our wife MBTA Red Line Station. And the, and the third and final video blog of the night will be the start of the Hall of Fame series, Who's a Hall of Famer? Um, the first one I'm going to um, cover is former Major League Baseball pitcher Jim Card, if he's a Baseball Hall of Famer. Have a good day, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Keep calm, and I'm a Julie Brennan guy. And in the words of Sean Lucha, get out. Bye.